9.30 p.m. on June 25, 1983, wallpaper salesman John Kentry walked out of a restaurant in downtown Pensacola, Florida and walked toward his nearby car. He climbed in, put the key in the ignition and turned on the lights. The Ford exploded, leaving Gentry critically injured. He lost parts of his intestines, liver, kidney and pancreas. As Gentry lay bleeding on the pavement, his fiancée, Judy Buenoano, who was still in the restaurant during the explosion, cradled his head and told him, I love you. It took three months in hospital, but Gentry recovered, but that was not his fiancée's plan. The man didn't know at the time. He had just survived a second murder plot engineered by a woman who went down in the annals of American crime history as the Black Widow. Judy Buenoano, born Judius Welty, spent the early years of her life in Texas where she was raised by her father and mother alongside her two older siblings and a baby brother, Robert. Her mother died when she was four years old. Judy and Robert were sent to live with their grandparents. After her father remarried, Judy and Robert moved to New Mexico to live with him and his new family. She claimed that her father and stepmother abused and starved her, forcing her to work as their slave. At the age of 14, she was sent to prison for two months after she attacked her father, stepmother and two stepbrothers. Upon her release, she chose to attend reform school and after graduating in 1960, she became a nursing assistant. At the age of 17, in 1961, she gave birth to her illegitimate son, Michael. Rumors were that his father was a pilot from the nearby US Air Force Base. Months later, it seemed she had finally found stability when she began relationship with Air Force Sergeant James Goodyear. The pair married on January 21, 1962 and had two more children and together the family relocated to Florida. But after Goodyear returned from a tour of duty in Vietnam in 1971, the otherwise healthy man fell ill with symptoms like nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. He was admitted to U.S. Naval Hospital in Orlando. Suffering from mysterious symptoms, he died on September 15, 1971. Judy cashed in his three life insurance policies, a total of $95,000. Towards the end of the same year, Judy suffered a house fire at her home, for which she received a further $90,000 from the insurers. The following year, she began dating Bobby Joe Morris, and when he moved to Colorado in 1977, Judy and her children moved with him. Before she left Pensacola, she was the victim of another house fire, which brought another insurance payout. Just a few months later, Bobby Joe suffered from mysterious symptoms and was admitted to the hospital, but doctors released him. However, he collapsed at home and was admitted to the hospital and died two days later on January 21, 1978. Once again, Judy benefited from the insurance policies taken out on his name. It was later revealed that Morris allegedly confessed that he and Buano Anu were responsible for a murder that happened in his Alabama hometown. Charges weren't pressed on either person in this case because police could find no concrete evidence. A couple of years later, Judy's son Michael joined the US Army and was to be stationed in Fort Benning, Georgia. On his way to Georgia, he stopped to visit Judy at her home in Florida. Shortly after arriving at Fort Benning, he began to show symptoms of poisoning, and doctors found high levels of arsenic in his blood. A few weeks later, Michael's muscles in his arms and legs had atrophied to the point that he could not use his hands and required metal braces on his leg to walk. He was discharged from the army and returned to his mother's home in Florida. In May of 1980, Judy took her sons, Michael and James, out on a canoe on Florida East River. The canoe overturned. James and Judy were able to swim to the shore. However, Michael, who was wearing heavy metal leg braces, drowned. After the accident, Judy collected $20,000 from Michael's military life insurance policy. Each death was declared natural or accidental, and it would have remained that way if it were not for John Gentry. Following Michael's death, Judy opened her own beauty salon and began dating John Gentry, a businessman from Florida. The couple got engaged in October of 1982. Judy got him to agree on taking out life insurance policies on each other and later increased the size of one on him to $500,000. Judy also convinced John to take special vitamins which made him feel nauseous and dizzy. When John complained of these effects, Judy allegedly told him to double the dosage. In 1983, John was on his way to liquor store when his car mysteriously exploded. In the process of investigating the explosion, 
detectives traced material used in the bomb to a particular supply store where Buenoano's name was on the receipt. Matching wire and tape were also found in her bedroom. Several of the alleged vitamin capsules were also recovered and found to contain arsenic. From there, it all unraveled the deaths of her son and two previous partners and the life insurance policies she had taken out on each and she had collected more than $200,000 and stood to earn another $500,000 from Gantry's death. Judy was tried separately for each murder and for attempted murder. She was sentenced to life imprisonment without parole for first 25 years on June 6, 1984 for Michael's murder. She received a 12-year sentence for Gantry case. She was sentenced to death by electrocution on 26 November 1985 for James Goodyear's murder. She was also convicted of multiple counts of grand theft and multiple acts of arson as means to gain insurance money. Colorado prosecutor decided not to continue the case against her over the murder of Bobby Joe Morris as she was already under the sentence of death in Florida. Bueno Anu never admitted to any of the killings. In 1998, at the age of 54, she became the first woman executed in Florida since 1848 and the third executed in United States since the reinstatement of the death penalty in 1976. She received the enduring nickname Black Widow as she fed off her mates and her youngs. What do you think of this case? Let me know.